My guest, Tunde Oyunem, is an elite Peloton instructor, trainer of millions of people across the world. She's a motivational speaker and a New York Times bestselling author. But Tunde, like so many, struggled with her weight and self-esteem. She also battled grief after the death of her mother, father, and brother. Tunde found her most authentic self by changing the narrative in her own life, and she continues to motivate and encourage others to do the same. Everyone, please help me welcome Tunde to the show. Hi! Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. You are so beautiful, even in person. Don't play with me. You are gorgeous. Oh my gosh, you are stunning! Hi, so are you? Walking out here like a supermodel. Thank okay, you. so we got to go back. So you joined Peloton in 2019, right? Right. Um, but what I found was interesting is that you failed your first audition. They didn't take you. They didn't take me the first time. Why? What happened? You know what? I think that first and foremost, my motto is I stay ready so that I don't have to get ready. Amen. And I hear it. I'm right there with you. Okay. I think there's so much to, there's often times where you're not ready for something. Uh -huh. um, sometimes the opportunity is just not ready for you. Yeah. That is such a big thing. Because we walk through life thinking sometimes like, oh, what's wrong with me? Instead of realizing that maybe they're not there. Yeah. They're not there. Yeah. Keep yeah. going. And so the space wasn't ready for me. Uh -huh. There was so much shift and alignment that had happened within the eight months that I feel like I was truly set up uh, to shine more eight months later. So you grew up and you struggled with your weight. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that time in your life. Uh, so I grew up Houston, Texas, uh, child of two immigrant parents. Like all factors point to, we love food. Mm -hmm. um, you from H-Town, I, I know that. H-Town, yes. Work. Well, I went to Katie Taylor. What, oh, you on the Katie Taylor? Okay, yeah, I was going to Houston, girl. <laughs> like okay, side note, all right, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was in the so, hood, I was on third war, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, I went to a school in U University of Houston. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember I was supposed to be a bridesmaid in my aunt's wedding. We go to the store, the dress doesn't come in my size. My aunt offers to buy me another dress, a more beautiful dress. Um, I broke down in the bridal shop that day because I felt like if I was the one wearing a different dress, everyone would know this secret that I'd been trying to hide, mm. which was my size. I remember I never laughed too hard because I didn't want people to notice I was in the room. And so... Um, oh, poor thing. We left that How day... How many years did you live like that? Not laughing so people didn't notice you? Oh, my gosh. My entire childhood, I would say probably until I was like 15 or 16 years old. Um, and then still some. I think, you know, for anybody who's battled uh, with their self-image, if you specifically weight, you can lose weight. But if you're not training your mind mm -hmm. at the same time, yeah. then you don't ever see it. Yeah. I thought that if I looked a certain way, then I would be accepted by, a, uh, by people. I thought that if I looked a certain way, the world would receive me differently. And so when I finally lost the weight and people were gravitating towards me, I said to myself, oh, okay, you're right. Like, now all these people want to be your friends. Now everybody likes you because you look like this. It took many years for me to realize I don't know that people gravitated towards me because I look different. I think I finally started to show them who, who you I were. really was. Because you were hiding And so your that's why, yeah. Good perspective. Okay, so we know you got a lot of Tundeisms where you that you use to help encourage many people, um, and a lot of those came from your mom, correct? Mm -hmm. Your mother's death had a tremendous effect on you. Because how old were you at the time? Oh, I think I was 29 or 30. To rewind, I, I lost my little brother um, when he was 19. Three years after that, I lost my dad, and then three years later, I lost my mom. How did you so, go through that grief? Because when you've hit under, under, yeah. under, and you just feel like the world's on you, yeah. It's like, well, how do I get up from that? How did you go through that? I don't know that I have advice for it, because I think that we all process grief the way that we're going to process grief. Yeah. Like, the way that I processed with my brother was very different than my dad and my mom. It was looked different each time. Um, I know that for me, I allowed, I allowed myself to be low. And yeah. so I think it was really a matter of not moving past the pain and moving through every, every, every emotion and every inch of it. Yeah. Every, every single day was a different color. Yeah. I got a question for you. When was the last time you cried? And what, what, what made you oh, cry? Oh, do you really want to know? I do. What made you the cry? The last time I cried uh, was yesterday. 
at the air. This is real talk. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday, is the camera still on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is yesterday at the airport. Um, the gentleman in front of me, I noticed that he kept turning around and looking behind my shoulder. And so uh, at first I thought something was wrong, you know, with yeah, us, yeah, me and yeah. him. And then so I looked past my shoulder and I noticed that there was a woman who was saying farewell to him. And so we are in the TSA line for probably 10 or 15 minutes and the entire time he kept turning around and looking at her and she just kept smiling looking at him. And I said, is that your wife? And he said, yeah, we've been together for six years. I said, she loves you. And he said, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be two weeks until I see her again. And they just kept having this like interaction where they were smiling and I cried and I looked and I said, wow, I don't have a person mm. that I look and have this like, Moment like, you're not dating? Honey, who do you know? Okay. <laughs> I know a lot of... Listen, Honey. I will hook you up. <laughs> is, 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 is a relationship something you want? Yeah, you know what? Uh, in my 20s, I thought to myself, what is wrong with me? How come nobody likes me? It was all, why me? Why me? Why not me? Yeah. At 37, it's a completely different space in that I am excited that the man that I end with he is working on himself right now, mm. as I am working on myself right mm. now. Yes. What kind of guys do you like? What kind of guys? Uh -huh. Type-wise? Yeah. Honey, I'm open. Okay. She does not discriminate. She does not discriminate. Yeah. I hear it. Yeah. I, I, a good heart, a good heart. Laugh, 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 laugh. Nice teeth, I see you have nice okay, teeth. Thank you. Uh, you yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I like a good heart and yeah. somebody who makes me laugh and thinks I'm hilarious, honestly. Yeah. You also have the um, acronym SPEAK. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, in my book, SPEAK, I, I, I spoke to five words as elements. Surrender, power, empathy, authenticity, and knowledge. I looked at the word surrender and what it truly meant. I noticed that every single time in my life when I fully surrendered, it resulted in change. Maybe change I liked or I didn't like, but that change always led me to growth. Mm -hmm. Power I define as living in purpose, on purpose, being of great purpose. Empathy I speak to as being rooted in love, not just love for other people, but love for yourself first. If I don't love myself, I don't even know how to love you. I don't yeah. even have the tools to do it. Yeah. Authenticity is the intersection of truth and trust. When you trust yourself enough to show up as you truly are in all spaces. Um, and then lastly, knowledge. Every misstep, every opportunity that I've had has led me to this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I recognize that everything in life is happening for me, everything. Mm -hmm. And not for, yeah. And not I, to me. Yeah, I hear yeah. that. Listen, yeah. thank you for coming here. Thank you. Y'all better give it up for Tunde. Um, you can learn more about Tunde's life and how to find your voice in her book, Speak. It's out in paperback right now. And guess what? Everybody in the audience, y'all get in the book. <laughs> You're amazing. Hold up, hold up. Where are you going? I know you want to watch more Karamo, so click here to subscribe and click here to watch more so we can keep talking and growing, friends. I love you.